Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We've got a definite integral from negative 1 to 0 of x cubed minus 4x plus 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx. So if you want to pause the video, try it on your own, feel free. It's pretty straightforward. Now notice here we have a rational function and before we can start even thinking about finding partial fraction decomposition, notice we have to long divide because the degree of the denominator is not yet higher than the degree of the numerator. Oh. So step one, long divide. And if you're one of those people who goes, Professor V, it has been a hot minute since I've done long division with polynomials. I hear you. I actually just made a new video refreshing all you lovely students on that topic. So I'll link it here. It'll be in the description too, to get you up to speed. Okay, so we've got x cubed, and notice there's no x squared term. So you can just leave a space, or I was taught to put a placeholder, so I still do that. There's no x squared, minus 4x plus 1. And then the thing to remember is polynomial long division is not as scary as it looks. All you have to do is focus on the leading terms. Ignore everybody else. And you go to yourself, what do you multiply x squared by to make it x cubed? Why just another x? Good. Then you distribute that x through to the divisor. This is the divisor. And I list the result underneath here. So that'll be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. And then in the next step, we subtract this from the row up above. So x cubed cancels. And then I have 0x squared minus negative 3x squared, so that's positive 3x squared, and then negative 4x minus 2x, which is negative 6x. Bring down that one. Then you repeat the division process. So you're going to say, what's 3x squared divided by x squared? Or what do you multiply x squared by to make it 3x squared? Same thing, just a positive 3. And then again, distribute that 3 through the divisor. List it right underneath here. So that'll be 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. And then again, we subtract. This cancels out as it should. Negative 6x minus negative 9x is positive 3x. And then 1 minus 6, negative 5. Now this right here is our remainder. So then we can go back, write the original integral as the quotient, x plus 3, plus remainder over divisor okay so now we have integral negative 1 to 0 x plus 3 plus 3x minus 5 over x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx how are we doing you know what's bothering me these parentheses are not the same size there we go okay so let's go through term by term. Antiderivative of x, we got it. Antiderivative of 3, we got it. Now it's time to find the partial fraction decomposition for this term here. And the denominator factors, so we're good to go. If the denominator doesn't factor, then usually you have to complete the square and either do like u sub, trig sub, or both. And I have plenty of videos covering that sort of scenario if you go through the rest of this playlist. But now let's just find the partial fraction decomp for 3x minus 5 over, let me factor the denominator into x minus 2 and x minus 1. So since those are both linear non-repeated factors, the decomposition will have the form a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 1. Okay, now we have to solve for a and b. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to show you guys the cover-up method. And it works better, you know, if I was in person showing you exactly how to cover up the terms, but I can still demonstrate it this way. So say we want to solve for a. I'm going to ignore the denominator of x minus 2 and cover up or basically ignore this term b here. So I'm going to write out a little more than you normally need to. Once you get the hang of this method, you could do it in your head, which is the cool thing. So say we're going to let x equal 2, and you're also ignoring the denominators that have x equal x minus 2 in them. So I'm just going to look over here. 3x minus 5 is on the left hand side over x minus 1 equals a. So what the heck did I just do? I ignored all of this. I basically covered it up. 
and I'm ignoring the denominator x minus 2 because I'm substituting in x equals 2. This is basically a shortcut to the normal process that I show you guys. When you multiply through by the LCD and then you substitute in 2 for x, those terms go away. So this kind of just cuts to the chase. And the cool thing is when you get comfortable, you can do it in your head. Okay, so then if I substitute in 2 for x here, right here, then you're going to have 6 minus 5, that's 1, over 2 minus 1, that's 1, is a. So a is 1. Yep, it really was that easy. Okay, say you want to solve for b. So you go, okay, in the denominator for b is x minus 1. So to solve for b, I'm going to let x equal 1. I'm going to ignore that denominator. I'm just going to have b. I'm going to cover up and completely ignore a over x minus 2. And then I'm going to just have over here 3x minus 5 over x minus 2. You're also not paying attention to the denominator of x minus 1. 3x minus 5 over x minus 2. Okay? And then substituting in 1 for x, let's see. 3 minus 5, that's negative 2. 1 minus 2, negative 1. So then b is equal to positive 2. So as long as your denominator contains distinct linear factors, you know, so nothing repeated, then this method works. And I can do a whole separate video dedicated to this if you want. So we can practice more examples. Probably better if I do it on the board in a classroom, if I'm being honest, so I can cover up with my arms and whatnot. Okay, so we've got our decomposition back to the original problem. Should we throw a little narrative in here? Yeah, so we have the following. Definite integral from negative 1 to 0 of x plus 3 a is 1, so plus 1 over x minus 2, plus b was 2 over x minus 1 dx. And then here, the integration is straightforward, so we'll have 1 half x squared plus 3x plus ln absolute value x minus 2 plus 2 ln absolute value x minus 1 evaluated from negative 1 to 0. Fabulous. Now substitute in upper limit minus lower limit. So that's 0 plus 0 plus natural log. Absolute value of 0 minus 2 is going to be positive 2. Plus 2 natural log. Absolute value 0 minus 1 is 1. Minus, now let's substitute in the lower limit of negative 1. So that'll give me a 1 half minus 3 plus natural log negative 1 minus 2 and then take absolute value this is 3 plus 2 natural log absolute value negative 1 minus 1 that's 2. Fabulous okay this ln of 1 2 times it is 0 so all I have now is ln of 2 this is a negative 5 halves with another negative sign, so positive 5 halves, minus ln of 3, minus 2 ln of 2. Yes? Okay, and then I can combine these two logarithms. Notice they have the same argument. So this is 5 halves, minus natural log of 3, minus only one natural log of 2 now. You could leave it like that, but you know what would be so slick of us? Yeah, let's rewrite it with our log properties. So factor out the negative, then it's ln of 3 plus ln of 2. And then we can multiply those two arguments. So we have now 5 halves minus the natural log of 6. And that is your final answer. Did you get it right for those of you who tried it on your own? Fabulous job. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. If you need help reviewing any of the integration techniques or any algebra, then check out all the videos that are organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. There's a whole playlist for integral of the day and then also Calc 2 video lectures, Calc 1, Calc 3, whatever you need. I probably have it if you're in, you know, about that level and stay tuned. I'm going to have more classroom videos uploaded soon, more stuff on sequences and series, absolute value equations and inequalities, so much good stuff. Thank you guys for your support. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you all so much. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.